Hello there, tomato heads. It is uh, Thursday, March 14th. And yesterday I did a part one of my 2024 grow list to, for tomatoes. Um, if you are new to watching me, I like to do these live to interact with all of you to get your reaction and um, share in all the fun with you. Um, so please feel free to put in the comments. I'm happy to see everybody here. Olivia's here. Hello. So, so this is streaming to my YouTube channel, which is Mr. And Mrs. Tomato Head, as well as in my Facebook group that I run with Jen Joy and Kina Tonarud. Um, it is called Tomato Lovers Collective and Swap. If you're not a member and you are a tomato head, we are waiting for you. We would love to have you. We're a Facebook community. We just hit 3,000 members. Actually, I think we're at like 3,030 something now. And we're having a big celebration tomorrow, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, if you're in the group. Um, so if you're not a member and you're watching this on YouTube, we uh, would love to have you. If you're in the group, please make sure you are signed in. Um, it looks like so far so good. I say this because I'm giving away some prizes, as I always do at the end of the broadcast. And um, if you are not signed in, if you're watching from the Facebook group, you need to grant StreamYard permission to get your name um, and profile photo. Otherwise, it's because we're a private group and the streams publicly. But it looks like so far so good. Jennifer Fox is here. Hello. Glad you're here, Malachite Jen, who made this awesome Malachite Twins mug for me. Um, in fact, a lot of these are gifts. If you guys do trades with me and you see these little rubber stamps on each envelope, this is what it looks like. I stamp each envelope with a little, little tomato. The exception is international stamps. I feel like it draws attention to the fact that there might be seeds in it, so I don't do it to international trades. Um, but happy to see everybody here today. You guys ready for another un unveiling of more tomatoes? I think I have 18 today. Is that right? I think I have 18. We'll see if we can get through it in a timely manner. Um, I see some people entering already. Just type in anytime during the show today, hashtag tomato, and uh, you will win some seed prizes. We um, gave away some good ones yesterday. I can put some of those up for grabs again, and then I've got some of what I'm going to show you today, which is great. Um, hey, Jerry, glad you're here. Katie B, she was a winner yesterday. Hey, Katie. My producer and friend, Michael Kelly, king of the micros and the hydroponics, my friend. Robin's here. Hello. Cynthia's here. Hello. Richard Masterson, good afternoon, folks from sunny Rhode Island. I went to the University of Rhode Island. I don't know if we've talked about this before, Richard, but I went to URI back in the, uh, well, should we say when? It was late 80s, early 90s. Um, Sati is here. Hello. Watching during my grocery shopping. But of course, as you should be, because we tomato heads, we just want to talk tomatoes. We want to see tomatoes. We want to learn about tomatoes. When I show, um, when I showcase varieties, I'm not just showing the photos. I'm I, I like to find the breeder when possible, the origin of the tomato, and then, you know, just my thoughts. Which is why yesterday's show was almost two hours for 16 varieties. Um, maybe we'll make it shorter today, but we will see. I do like to interact with you guys. Um, Blessed Vermont. Hello, Lauren and fellow tomato lovers. I like that profile photo. What what variety is that, Blessed Vermont? I assume that's Vermont. Maybe it's just VT. Blessed VT. Sam's here. Hello. Sure over here. Ho. Uh, Darla's here. Good afternoon. I'm fat. glad I finally got to get in on a live one. Me too. Me too. Um, sadly, well, tomorrow's our big, our big, um, Lots of prizes Kina, Jen, and I are giving away. I am going away for the weekend, which means that I'm not going to be able to do part three until next week. I, I will plan on Monday. Um, so, uh, yeah. So, and we've got more to go. I was telling Kina and Jen today, like, by the time I finally get through all these varieties and, like, set it in stone, the season will be over. It's crazy. But I do like doing this with all of you guys because I like to hear your thoughts. Seeing lots of entrants in the hashtag tomato. My buddy Luke's here. Hello, everybody. Nice to be here as always. Um, Cynthia, we don't mind if it goes a long time. I know, you know. Um, hi there, Facebook user from North Florida Zone 9. Make sure you sign in 
you should I know it look, on your end it looks like you're signed in, but on my end you come up as this because you need to grant StreamYard permission. So if you go to stream, let me put in the banner here. Um, if you go to StreamYard.com backslash Facebook, I'll leave that up for a minute. You're going to get to a screen that looks like this. And you need to hit that blue button, let StreamYard see your Facebook comments live. If you don't care if your name is up, and you don't want to get any prizes today, it really doesn't matter. But um, if you would like your name up and win some seed prizes, you may want to check that out. Um, Blessed VT says that is Potato Leaf Hillbilly. And yes, it's Vermont. Blessed Vermont. It did look like a hillbilly, but there's other things that look like that too. So that's a beautiful photo. Missy's here. Hi, Missy. Glad you're here. I signed in a streamer for the first time. Can you see me? I can see you, Kim. Yay. Yay, yay, yay. All right. Um, seeing lots of entrance. So, yes. So, yesterday we did part one of this. And I'm going to, I do have, still have the slides. So I'm going to go through quickly, famous last words, and show you what I unveiled yesterday. So, Number one, Lavorgienne, my number one. And spoiler alert, you, if you're in the group, have a chance to win a pack of Lavorgienne seeds tomorrow at our 3,000 member celebration. Hmm. Okay, I'm hoping this is better. Um, I get like a notification saying when my internet is bad. I closed all my windows today. The only window I have open is um, is our StreamYard giveaway tool. So um, yeah, so hopefully this is better. I don't want to talk and have you guys miss anything. Yes, thank you, Luke. You are my, my uh, spokesperson, internet disruptions, but it looks like all is good now, yes? Um, all right, let's get back to what I showed yesterday. So if you didn't hear for Lavorgienne, if you are able to watch us live tomorrow, I am, we are giving away, happen to have found some extras. And for those of you that can't watch tomorrow, that can't be there live, we're doing a separate giveaway for that. So have no fear. Maybe you can win a pack of Lavorgienne too. Just saying. Um, all right, so that was number one. Let's get through this, Lauren. Krimsky Malahit, which is a cross between black crim and malachite box, my number one favorite tomato. Carl's Emslin Trauba, I know I'm brutalizing that. The grandson of the breeder who is 103, I found out. I said 101. He's, Tim, the grandson, said he's 103. Um, offered Jen and I these seeds just yesterday. He'll be mailing them to us. So this is a grape from Emsland, Germany, from 103-year-old uh, Karl Schneiderger, Schneiderger, and that is him, cutie patootie. Jarson 16, which is Malachite Box and Cherokee Purple. I was looking for that one, and Krimsky Malahit for what felt like forever. So what a gift to be able to have those. Jarson 10 by the um, Polish breeder Jarson. This is a Nanus Noir and Kazula 37 version four. Banana Noir, which is my tomato. Love, love, love it. Glad to give so much out to all of you. Terracotta Cherry, which is a, um, can't find them right now. It was on um, Heirloom Seed House from Evan Gregoire. It's a um, mutation that happened in his garden, I believe. 
So um, I'm growing them out. I know Keena's growing them out too. I've given, I, I gave some seeds of this to the Shamrock Seed Swap too. So maybe you guys got some too. They, but you won't find anything on the internet. I had to like fight Evan to get a picture. Suffer Well, one of Billy Yoder's Depeche Mode ones that are highly sought after, um, which is a cross between Berkeley pink tie dye and Cherokee purple potato leaf. Banyal Bufar, which is a long keeper from Spain that I have been aching for and finally got just yesterday. Strange Love, another Depeche Mode one by our friend Bill Yoder. If you didn't catch uh, Tomato Talk Live last month with Jen and I, we had him on for 90 minutes. It was an extraordinary interview. So much fun. He's such a nice guy. Pixie Fire, which is an exclusive variety from Teresa Smith, who is in our group of Terra Nova Farm. Um, well, if you're in the group, she is in Tomato Lovers Collective and Swap. This variety just looks heavenly. As do everything, all the varieties I'm picking look heavenly. Otherwise, I wouldn't have picked it. Um, toad Suck Toad. I know this has been uh, a big part of our conversation since I did the Bounty Hunter Seeds unboxing a few weeks ago. Um, great looking variety, rare, for, by, bred by the late Steve Whiteacre of the United States. Prime Rib. This is an exclusive to Bunny Hop Seeds or Heritage Seed Market. Um, looks like a slab of prime rib. She said it gets even darker than this, so I'm excited to see that. Purple Light, another one available from um, Bounty Hunter Seeds. Looks awesome. Jarson 7 um, from, again, the Polish breeder Jarson. Cross between Malachite Box and Kazula 25. This photo is from Lux Tomatoes. I just love that photo. I'm also growing one I should mention from Terra Nova Farm um, gave me a version, which I do not have a picture of, but she said it's an ochre uh, color to it. I talked yesterday, if you didn't watch the show, I talked about all the variations in varieties like Jarson, which aren't exactly stable, but sure are a lot of fun to grow out all the, the generations and see what you come up with. Butterscotch Stripes. This came from Bounty Hunter Seeds. He does not have any more in stock for the season, I believe. But I will be growing them out. And I think Kina is too. I think she may have got her hands on some. And maybe you guys did too. This is a Dean Slater variety. It was a mutation of, was it Shadow? I should know this because I have it from yesterday. Um, Butterscotch Stripes. I think it was my last one. Shadow Dancer. Came out of a Shadow Dancer cross. Um, so that's exciting. So that was, that was our 16. So who's ready to go with some more? Try to get 18 more in. Um, Facebook user, I agree. So awesome sauce on the 103 year old gardener. If this is you and you want to be eligible for prizes, make sure you do that stream, that stream yard sign in, um, that I showed earlier, stream, stream backslash Facebook, grant them permission. If you'd like to win some seeds today. Uh, but I agree. That story is just awesome. Um, Homesteader Rachel, hello. Glad you could be here. You Grow Row, hello. Glad you could be here. Let's see, Wild Haired Mavens is here. Hello. Um, I miss anybody? Inga's here. Hello, Inga. Sniper Cat, I so want to grow that variety. I'm hoping to trade with someone at the end of the year. Hmm, not sure which variety that. It, oh, maybe Lavorgienne? I don't think you have to worry. Enough people have it. I know Kina's growing it. I know Jen is growing it. And a few others of you have been um, able to get your hands on seeds either through me or I did a giveaway um, or we did a giveaway. I forget when we did that. I think it may have been, I don't know, one of the giveaways, one of you won. Um, so if it's Lavorgienne, I don't think you'll have to worry. There will be seeds readily available. I just noticed, and I forgot to tell Keena and Jen this, my very first one germinated just today. So I'm super excited. All right, we ready? We all ready? Deb, Deb says she's going to grow it. Oh, Linda, yes. Oops.
I'm going to try to close out some windows here. Maybe that has something to do with it. Getting better. Bear with me, gang. Okay, I think we're good now. I don't know. I closed out all the windows, but I can only close out so many windows. Um, but it looks like we're good again. Okay. Number 17. Ready? You can't, you won't, and you don't stop. Who's heard of this variety? I bet you haven't. This one I got from um, a vendor named Happy Cat Farms. I think they're in Canada. I'm pretty sure Happy Cat Farms is in Canada. I've gotten some long keepers from them. They've got some great Italian varieties. I happened to come across this one um, and it sounds fantastic. The write up on the site says, you can't, you won't, and you don't stop. Well, because you can't, you won't, and you don't stop. This cherry tomato is hands down the best red cherry tomato I have ever eaten. The seed came from a friend from China. I liked the habit and productivity, but the flavor had huge swings in its variability. So we kept selecting for flavor, and in a few short year years, we nailed it. So it was bred by them. Um, I remember sitting in front of a row of these, eating till my stomach hurt, and looking at the hundreds of pounds in front of me still to pick and eat. When someone came on the radio in the truck, because you... You can't, you won't, and you don't stop. Just kind of, it must be in the name of a song. Um, summed up my life that afternoon. Plants are indeterminate, will grow until killed by frost. They're on the, the fruits are on the larger side of most of the cherry tomatoes that I grow and are very productive. Flavor profile is amazing. Super straightforward tomato flavor that you would get from a larger red tomato. But with simple sweetness on the finish that balances, balances the entire experience out. Um, it has been years since I have grown a red cherry tomato other than Chadwick cherry, which came into my life and changed my mind. It was followed by you can't, you won't, and you don't stop as my number one for any cheese or charcuterie board that comes my way. We have also started to make a cherry sauce out of this. And only this fruit fashioned after the simple but luxurious sauces that come from Sicily. Ooh, ooh, yeah. I agree. This has got to go on my want list. You can't, you don't, and you won't stop. Oh, it's a Beastie Boys song. Thank you. Thank you. Um, sounds awesome, Lisi. I agree. And is here. Almost missed it. It's one of the nice days this week to do outside work. I know it is for me too, and I'm in here, but that's okay. It's okay. Um, so yes, the, you can get that. Uh, look up Happy Cat Farms. I believe they have them in stock. And I think they're from Canada, but they do they did ship to me in the United States. Okay, that's number one. Number two, I talked about this one when? Recently. Oh, during my tomato Eden, my last haul. This one's called Rojo Verde uh, by, by Colore de Harl. Um, it's from Spain, so I did try to remember my Spanish pronunciations from back when I took Spanish. Uh, the breeder is Juan Antonio Romero Lopez. It is gorgeous. Just the picture sold me. But let's see. I don't know much about it. It did come from Tomato Eden. It said the variety originally from Spain was created and stabilized by the collector Juan Antonio Romero Lopez in the Cordoba region in Al Al Cor Al Corson. Sweet taste, a very beautiful and productive variety. That's all I know about it. I haven't seen it anywhere else. Um, but yeah, I know, Linda. Oh, wow. It looks big. Um, the color profile, you know, the color is exactly what I like. You guys probably know me by now and my taste. In fact, you see a lot of my tomatoes sort of look the same. It's like either dark or purple or it's green or it's got like a combination here. Um, so pretty, Haley. I agree. Totally. Uh, I just got seeds for Rojo Verde. I'm trying to find a place to grow it. That is the struggle, my friend, the space to grow it. You know, we in Tomato Lovers Collective and Swap, we are complete enablers and finding space for our tomatoes is a challenge. And I, you know, thanks to grow bags, 
I'm not, I'm no longer confined to my in ground or raised bed grow spaces. And I'm constantly looking at areas. I'm like, oh, on the shed here, that gets enough sun. I could put, I could fit 10 grow bags here. So yeah, I can't even imagine what my neighbors think. We are in farm country um, out here in, in rural New Jersey, but still it's, um, they just don't understand the struggle of tomato heads. You can't just grow 10 varieties or I can't grow 10 varieties. I can't, I won't, and I don't stop, <laughs> basically. To quote the Beastie Boys, sort of. Um, looks luscious, I agree. Cosmic Tomato Power's itty bitty growing space. For sure. All right, what's next? Ah, uh, got these seeds a while ago. This was on my my want list and these came from Tomato Fifu. It is a cross between Mariana's Peace and Cherokee Purple. Um, I have not grown Mariana's Peace, but I hear from people it's spectacular. So I just thought, how about I just cut out Mariana's Peace and go for Mariana's Peace and Cherokee Purple? Um, it says it's a recent variety by Reinhard Kraft. Not all that recent. This is, it's 2010. Fruits are from 200 to 350 grams, beefsteak type, flattened at the poles, ribbing at the top, and shoulders more or less strongly rounded depending on the size. Um, very dense and firm beef flesh, excellent rich and balanced flavor. Plant with great development, regular foliage, indeterminate, good and regular production until frost better in the second half of the season. Um, Darla, how close do you place your grow bags to each other? Well, that's a great question. Initially, very close. And then the tomato plants do the talking and I need to spread them out a bit. That's like when I'm, when I'm, what I said a few minutes ago, like, yeah, I can fit 10 grow bags here, like right along Rob's, Rob's shed. And that works until it doesn't, until the plants bush out. And I'm like, oh, I really probably only sh should have planted five. That's when the real creativity comes in. Like, where can I move this one? But that's the nice thing with grow bags. You know, they are portable. Um, you know, if you have the book Epic Tomatoes by Craig LaHoulier, and I believe I mentioned this yesterday. I know I mentioned this yesterday. He grows um, in his driveway. He, in the book, he has a picture of five gallon paint buckets all lined up with tomatoes all in his driveway. Um, you make do, tomato lovers, tomato heads, we just make do, don't we? Um, Facebook user says, ooh, I bet that's a great one. I agree. Um, make sure you're signed in if you're watching from in the group. If this is you that said that you're not signed in, make sure you do that if you wanna win some prizes. If you're joining us late, I'll be giving away some seeds at the end, um, make sure. You type in hashtag tomato somewhere in the comments to win some seeds. All right, what's next? Dun, 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 dun. Isis Brandy. This is another one by Reinhard Kraft. Um, Isis Candy is a very well-known heirloom cherry. Um, I grew it probably 20 years ago. Um, Isis Brandy is a cross of Isis Candy and Yellow Brandy Wine. I should have put that cross on this. I totally forgot. So Isis Candy and Yellow Brandy Wine. The man is very gifted with his crosses, I will tell you that. Um, he created or represented it in 20, 2008 in the Seed Saver Yearbook. I got these seeds from Tomato Fai Fu. Um, small fruit of 80 to 120 grams, round and flattened. Um, Two-tone pink, yellow, orange skin, which can become entirely pink when fully mature. Juicy flesh with an excellent sweet and fruity flavor. Vigorous plant with great development, regular foliage, mid-season production. Um, the production's just average compared to the vigor of the plant. I don't care. I just want to taste Isis candy with yellow brandy wine. Um, Oh man, that looks like it's sweet and full flavors. I agree. It just looks so sweet. That color's incredible. Isis brandy. Yes. Yes, I agree. I should look. I should look at my spreadsheet. If I have extras of these seeds to give out, I can offer that as one of our prizes today. I will have it 
I can find out. Let's find out. I have given several away. Um, I do. I can offer that as one of ours. So, so far we're going to give, well, that's the only one I've talked about so far. I know I can give away, away at least one Isis Brandy. I'll draw five names like we did yesterday, and then you guys can choose your variety. Um, Linda says, pretty color. I agree. I love the darkness of the outside as compared to the inside. And if you look closely, there's like some speckles there, some dots, which is really neat. Um, Samantha says she's collecting all of Reinhard Kraft's varieties. Yeah, he's got some great ones for sure. Luke says, wow, that's awesome. Yeah, Isis Brandy. Yay. You know, when I talk about Banana Noir, um, not so much in our group anymore because people are used to hearing about it. But when I started talking about it last year, when we started giving it out, a lot of people thought it was just a typo and we were talking about Ananas Noir until I explained, no, this is like our cross. So when I initially saw Isis Brandy, I thought it was a typo for Isis Candy. But lo and behold, thanks to Tomato Fifu and their great information and varieties, get to try this baby. So I'm excited for that. Um, I don't grow a lot of yellow tomatoes, yellow, orange, bicolor, pink, yellow, orange, bicolor, tricolor. Yes, but I'm not a big fan of yellows and oranges. They just, they're very citrusy and yummy. I like, I think Darla said it last year with me that I like really pronounced loud flavors. I think, I think that was you, Darla. Um, I like loud flavor and I just feel for me, it lacks a bit. Rob likes them. He likes, you know, the good Kellogg's breakfast on a sandwich. Me, I want, you know, I want power punch of flavor. All right. So that is Isis Brandy. Um, this next one is another exclusive from Terra Nova Farm or Teresa Smith that I was fortunate enough. She, she gave me um, seeds. It's a, I forget if this one's a limited release. Doesn't say limited release. I know Pixie Fire was limited release. This is a dwarf called Earth Angel, that beautiful ochre color, uh, potato leaf dwarf, chartreuse, sprawling plants, three to four feet tall. I'm really excited for this. It looks delicious. And as I explained yesterday, I, I'm a real sucker for things that are, you know, not real well known yet, limited release. Um, varieties are falling off the, you know, like destined for extinction. I, you'll see that in my varieties that I choose. Um, so I feel very blessed and honored to have been given seeds for this, and I'm looking forward to growing it. Um, Kit's here. Kina's mom. Hello, Kit. Glad you're here. Facebook user says, looks like a good one. Reminds me a little of Karma Apricot. That It does. You're right. Um, and if this is you, make sure you're signed in if you'd like to win some prizes. Um, Luke says, I like the ochre color. Mostly very interesting taste. Yes, I agree. I agree. I'm growing a number this year. Um, uh, butterscotch stripes, which I shared yesterday. Jarson 13 ochre pear. Um, uh, well, there's at least one other that I can think of that I think I'm growing. I'll save it for a future, a future um, show. But yeah, Lisa. Hey, Lisa. Earth Angel looks fabulous. I agree. Allison Francis. Hello from Greece. Hi, Allison. Glad you could join us. Um, so that's Earth Angel. This next one, I know several of you uh, got this from Carolina's Paradise on Etsy, who um, has become a friend. She's got some amazing varieties, Carolina's Paradise. This one is called Copper Pipe. Look at that photo. Come on, <laughs> seriously. Um, this is from the breeder Zegalin. I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it, probably not, from Russia. Um, it's a medium, uh, mid-season, it looks like, indeterminate. Um, they recommend growing into two double stems. Fruit weight is 150 to 200 grams flat rounded brown chocolate with a copper sheen and a green brown top. Classic sweet and sour flavor. The flesh is juicy, tender. I just heard um, 
recently someone said, I think it was on YouTube, someone said they grew this and it was phenomenal. So it had been not like on the fence with me. And then I'm like, no longer on the fence. This is going on my definite grow list. Um, copper pipe looks awesome. Yes, I agree. So if you go on Etsy, it's Carolina's Paradise. I believe she still has them in stock. Uh, art picture, I agree. Cynthia says, how did I miss that? Don't know. Don't know. Really looking forward to growing copper pipe. Malachite Jen says, it looks so good. I agree. And Garden Girl, wow, that is an awesome sauce tomato. I know, I know. Um, normally I like slicing the tomato when I'm taking pictures to show the cross section, um, you know, horizontal, but that, I mean, that's a fantastic picture. So that's Copper Pipe. I'm going through much quicker today than yesterday, I think. How long, we, oh, it's been half an hour, yeah. I think we won't be two hours. This one, um, Makes me think of you, Deb, if you're watching. Uh, Chef Guy Geta. This one, I don't know. I can't find any information on where it is from or the breeder. I got seeds from Tomato Eden. It looks fantastic. It looks like a Lauren tomato for sure. Um, Tatiana at Tomato Eden says it's a high yielding variety. Height of the bush is 1.2 to 1.5 meters. The fruits are beautiful pears in green pink shades, stripes, strokes, and specks. The flesh is bicolored, green, pink, sweet, um, mid season and determinate. Inside is green, red, juicy, sweet marmalade. Very productive variety, up to 10 tomatoes in large clusters. Pew! 10 of these in large clusters. Sign me up because I'm growing, chef. Guy Geta. And I know, yep, here's Deb. Hey, Deb. This was on her most, I think this was on your most wanted list, wasn't it, Deb? Yeah. Um, and I think I was able to give you seeds for it. Um, super excited for this one. Luke says, another beauty looks so tasty. Look at the interior colors on that thing. I mean, how can that not be good? It just can't. Gorgeous. Mind blown. I know. I don't know, Deb, if you had seen this these new pictures, I know um, the pictures on Tomato Eden are okay, but I found these somewhere at some a Russian site, Domash, NIY, I think it was that site. Um, these pictures, I was like, oh, I need to put these in my spreadsheet. Heck yeah, for sure. Looks as you have chosen amazing species. Thank you. Thank you. Um, if everything unknown, how did it get a name? I'm, sh I'm sure it's out there somewhere. Um, you know, I, I do my best to research. I couldn't find anything, but if you can, I would appreciate you letting me know. Somebody named it, somebody bred it, um, or was a spontaneous, muta or not spontaneous, but a mutation in someone's garden. I would love to find out. Obviously, I like to provide that whenever possible, but do not know, do not know. I know that I was able to find so Tomato Eden is a site from Latvia and um, also found it on a Russian site. So it might be something from Eastern Europe, but I do not know. Nor do I know who Chef Guy Geta is. That I would like to know too. Is this a famous chef that I need to be aware of? I don't know. Um, the tomatoes on Tomato Eden are more green. I agree. I agree. I think often she uh, shares photos that, and she'll say this too, that aren't fully ripe. Um, so I thought these looked a bit more pronounced. So really good to share that. Jerry says, looks so awesome. I agree. And Terry says, looks yummy. Looks yummy. Samantha says, La Table in Provençal by the retired chef Guy Guetta. So I'm guessing a French chef. Yes. Um, Michael, they look about the size of BN. Is BN the little abbreviation for Bananas Noir? They do. You're right. They look exactly the same size as my bananas. Really, really nice. Um, believe so for the French chef. Thank you, Samantha. I'm I'm a big foodie, a big foodie. So it's kind of surprising that I don't know a chef. And I've got to think that most of you out there, you tomato heads, we're all kind of foodies, right? Because if we weren't foodies, we would just be growing like better boy. Right? Is that a little snobby to say? 
I'm not sure. I'm not sure we would care this much about tomatoes if we weren't at least a little bit of a foodie. So if you're a foodie like me, and I know Luke, I, we talk all the time about food. I know, I know you are. Um, Rob and I saw it, Mr. Tomato Head, and I saw a fantastic film a couple weeks ago. Uh, now I'm forgetting the name. It was with, it was in French. Um, oh my gosh. Now I can't think. It was like the, the taste of, the taste of things, I think. Luke, Luke, maybe you can remind me because I know I talked to you about it. And it was with French, French actress who was in Chocolat. Now I can't think of her name. Anyway, if you got the opportunity to see this film, it was a beautiful film. How it was not nominated for a best foreign film in at the Oscars, I do not know. It's all about food. You don't have to be a foodie to like it, but if you are a foodie, you will just salivate literally. It's awesome. Um, oh gosh, I forget the actress's name, but she was fantastic. What's her name? I'm too skinny to be a foodie. <laughs> I am. I am a foodie. Um, I am a Juliette Binoche. Thank you. Yes, Teresa, you're right. Fantastic. And it, I'm pretty sure the movie's called The Taste of Things. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. We saw it in a, an in a theater not far from us that does independent films. It was so beautiful. So beautiful. Um, anyway, as far as being skinny, thank you. It's, I guess, um, Sometimes I get a bit too thin, and I, I know many of you would say I should have such problems, but an unhealthy thin, I do have some health issues. Um, but I, I'm also, I eat plant-based, I have for the past three years. It helps with my chronic pain. Just for me, we're all different. I would never tell anybody else, you need to be plant-based because it will help with your chronic pain. But for me, it's very a very dramatic difference. So I eat a lot. We have sourdough bread every night that I make. Um, so I eat, I do eat a lot, but I do eat plant-based, which doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be skinny. There is gene genetics there too. Um, yeah, I'll just leave it at that. But, but eating plant-based has been a game changer for me. I would never, ever be able to keep up this energy level if I wasn't. I was a pretty sick girl up until three years ago. I'm still sick, but not nearly as much. All right, that's a bit of a downer. Let's get back to... To me. Oh, I know it was a joke, Elaine. I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make you feel uncomfortable at all. I know. I'm sorry if I made you feel uncomfortable. Um, Anna says, tomatoes weren't really my thing until I tasted heirlooms, and I blame Roots and Refuge for that. Yeah, Jess at Roots and Refuge, I think, is responsible for a lot of tomato heads. Um, Amanda says, I'm a foodie, too. Oh, my goodness. I love cooking it, growing it, eating it. Isn't that the best feeling when you grow when you eat and cook what you grow i i can't stand the winter because in the summer even spring we um i rarely need to go to the grocery store we eat a lot of rice a lot of pasta and a lot of vegetables and potatoes a lot of potatoes we grow we've been growing potatoes in the last couple of years it's been great all right back to tomatoes though this one is thanks to my friend kim lund from right off the heirloom farms, right? Is that right off the, why does that sound wrong to me all of a sudden? Right off the farm heirlooms, <laughs> got it mixed up. She, this is called Carol Chico's Big Paste Black, the breeder's savior, Shembri from Australia. It is a cross between the very popular Carol Chico's Big Paste and Black Crim. I don't know why I didn't put the crosses on the bottom. I was good about that yesterday, and somehow I was, I think I was rushing to get more out today. Um, Tomato Fest does sell it. I got these seeds from Kim from right off the farm heirloom seeds. Um, large tomato plants yield big crops of one pound, three to four inch meaty black ox heart tomatoes with rich mahogany colors and pronounced rich flavors that contains sufficient acid to make this a very tasty tomato. A great tomato for making a rich tomato sauce or slicing up for sandwiches. But let me tell you this, in all seriousness, what sold me was this quote from Kim Lund. And I know if she's not watching today, I know she'll be watching because she watched yesterday's replay. She says, 
I have only had a few tomatoes that almost brought me to tears. And this is one of them. Kim and I have what seems to be the exact same taste in tomatoes. She said the other one that brought her to tears, she did say Uptown Funk was really good last year too, which I also loved. She said this one and Dwarf Purple Heartthrob were the two that brought her to tears last year. I will be growing both of them because I trust Kim's opinion. Um, Facebook user says, wait, what? I want to hear more about the dietary changes and how that is helping. It's not a downer to hear about it when it's also happening to me and probably lots of other members' hugs. Um, well, gosh, I mean, why don't you private message me? Anybody that wants to talk about it, why don't you private message me? I suppose I could do a show on it at some point. I never want to appear preachy, and I know plant-based eaters often get a bad rap because we feel like everybody needs to be vegan or whatever. And that is so not me at all. When I went to Italy, by the way, I was not plant-based. No way. No way. I, I brought steroids with me just in case, but I was not going to do my once in a lifetime trip to Italy and be plant-based. Uh -uh. Um, but yes, it has been dramatic for me and I'd be happy to talk to anybody about it. If you want to private message me, it's, it's been, it's been, um, really great. It's not as hard as you think it is. It's quite delicious, as a matter of fact. Um, let's go back. To, I love black tomatoes. Me too. Shopping for dinner in the garden. I know it's the best feeling. Oh, D, I'm also plant-based. I make sourdough bread weekly. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, so good to hear that. And I don't know who, I started making sourdough. It's been about a year and a half. I make and I don't know how to, the French pronunciation, Luke's going to yell at me for having it, it incorrect, but it's boule, B-O-U-L-E. It's basically just a round loaf. I make one every other night that Rob and I eat, and our son is living with us right now. We eat half one night, half the other night, and it's a constant feeding the starter and all that. I just love it. And I always thought that some making sourdough sounded so complicated. And honestly, initially, it it felt like it. But now it's just boom, boom, boom. I follow a very simple recipe. If anybody wants to talk about that, I can talk sourdough too. So private message me. Um, Amanda, 10 years plant-based, started as an autoimmune disease diet. I bet I know whose autoimmune disease diet. We've been on and off uh, plant-based for about 30 years. Um, I'll go off and then I have a piece of cheese. I'm like, I got to go. But this has been the longest, I think. The, our kids were raised vegan also. Um, but, uh, yeah, I won't get into any more of that. I can talk about it. And I, I, uh, I want to help people, but this is probably not the right platform. I'm thinking, yes, do a show on it. Okay. I'll do a show on it. I won't put it in the group, but I'll put it on my YouTube channel for sure. I will totally my happy place. I want to hear about it too. Okay. I will. Um, let me, I'll just tell you really quickly and then I'll move up back to tomatoes. It has helped me dramatically with my pain. I still have pain. I live with lupus and fibromyalgia and have for like uh, over tw like 23 years. Um, and it's helped in the past. Why I go off it, I don't know. When I was going to get my first COVID vaccine and I was getting it mine earlier than a lot of people because of my health issues, I was able to, it's like getting concert tickets to get a vaccine in the beginning, if you remember. But I remember thinking like, at the time, I didn't know what the vaccine was going to do with my autoimmune stuff. So I'm like, you know, I'm going to go into this vaccine in fighting form. I'm going to go plant-based again just to see, like, it can't hurt, right? The The difference was so dramatic and so many things with me, neurological pain, blah, 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 um, that I've just stuck with it ever since. Went off for Italy, came back, and yeah, it's going to be a lifelong thing for me because it, it's... Uh, my family often, now I'm going to cry. My family often cries when um, seeing the difference in me and how what I'm able to do and take a trip to Italy and all of that. So it's been it's been wonderful. Um, all right. Enough about that. Carol Chico's big pace. <laughs> this is the best segue ever, Michael. <laughs> I'm plant-based except for meat. <laughs> I love it. That was the best segue. Always the, always the producer. Oh, thank you, Hugs. 
Oh, thanks, Luke. You guys are amazing, too. I'm a very passionate person, if you haven't <laughs> guessed that. I get very passionate about what I feel strongly about. I guess that is the same thing, passionate and feeling strongly about. But um, I do love to help people. So if I can help you at all, please let me know. This next one, I know many of you got it. Bo Mango. This one is thanks to my buddy, Malachite Jen. She told me about it many months ago. This is offered by exclusively from the San Diego Seed Company. She forwarded me, I think it was last season, at the end of last season, that San Diego, the people, that I think it's a couple behind the San Diego Seed Company, they um, did like a, a taste test like Rob and I do every year. We do like, we're not like Jen Joy. We don't do, you know, the amount of taste test. Well, I shouldn't say it like that. We do different taste tests. We do a taste test of every tomato that we that we grow, but we do an end of season favorites. Um, and so they did an end of season favorites and Bo Mango was their favorite. And you can find out about it on their website, San Diego Seed Company. I've given many, many, many of these seeds out. I've ordered several packs and have given seeds out. Um, and uh, it looks delicious. It looks delicious. The breeder, they say on the website for San Diego Seed Company, um, that it is bred by our friends over at UC Davis and Organic Seed Alliance. Malachite Jen wrote them and just confirmed it's not a hybrid, right? And they said, no, it is not a hybrid. Not that hybrids are bad, but it's just good to know if we're going to be saving seeds. Um, it says the flavors are out of this world. Tropical fruity flavors of mango and citrus explode in your mouth from this green beefsteak. Large and juicy. By crossing classic heirlooms with productive commercial varieties, you get the best of both worlds. It does not say what those varieties are. Um, you also get best of both worlds, flavor production and disease resistance. Out of thousands of crosses in this breeding project, this is a tomato that stood out to us as incredibly unique and flavorful. And it came in number one in their taste test last year. Um, this looks fantastic, Bow Mango. Kit, did I not give you Bow Mango? I know Kina like ordered some through me because she couldn't order them in, in Norway. I know she ordered a couple packs. Is your daughter holding out on you? Because I believe she has two packs. She's probably giving, giving them away though. But if you need some kit, let me know. Um, Uh-oh, Hannah, the ones I sewed didn't germinate. I assume you're talking about Bow Mango? Hmm. I haven't sewn mine yet. Interesting. Very interesting. Um, yeah, I'd like to know more about that, Hannah. How many did you sew? How long have you been waiting? I did notice that the seeds, I, I think I'm right about this. I did notice that the seeds looked a little, not dark. I, I don't want to give I really don't want to give this a bad name because I'm totally growing it if it germinates. But they didn't look like fresh, fuzzy seeds, but not all tomato seeds do. So I'm curious to find out more about that. Oh, Michael, you're a carnivore. <laughs> Kim, I have to find that bow mango. Looks amazing. I believe that... Um, San Diego Sea Company is the only place that carries it, but I, I checked just a couple days ago. They do have them in stock. You should be fine. She had oops, she has some seed bags for me when we meet next time. I know Bo Mango's in there. Um, Hannah says, only two to three, but almost all my other ones germinate, but I'll try the rest now. Oh, you, you've already given up for this year. Shoot. Well, that's good to know. Maybe I'll sow mine now. That's good to know. Thank you, Hannah. Um, Ashley, I sowed two and one germinated. It has its true leaves now. This is good to know, gang. If you're growing bow mango, it might be smart if you haven't sown yet and you're not ready. I'm going to start mine now, even though I'm not ready to start. I've started a few, as I showed you yesterday, but not all. I'm going to sow more after this episode. Um, thank you, Ashley. Thank you, Hannah. Um, Sniper Cat, I have this for next year. I chose Del Nerpio Verde for this year. Grew it last year. Very good, very good green. Um, I talked about that a little bit yesterday, I think. Um, yeah, I was, there was something 
I think I got the seeds for Del Nerpio from Bad Skins Garden, which is a great vendor. And I think it was either there on another site. It said that Del Nerpio Verde is number one and beats Malachite Box. Oh, I did talk about this yesterday. And I thought it was very good. I didn't think it was it beat Malachite Box. And for me, productivity wasn't great. I had one in ground, one grow bag. Oh, but you know what? If you watch yesterday's show, that was one of the ones that in ground was affected by my full spring and the late season frost. It did come back and and um, came back well, but yeah, it didn't produce a whole lot of tomatoes for me. Um, but that could be because it was set back too. The grow bag, which was one of my garage tomatoes, didn't give me a lot either, but it was a very good tomato. I think you'll enjoy it. Um, Keen, I sowed two on Saturday. I think I have two seedlings already. Good to know. Yeah, Kina wanted this so badly. She said, can you order two packs for me? <laughs> um, and I'm like, of course, because that's what we do, Kina and I and Jen, of course. we Kina and I have the same taste in tomatoes, too, completely. Um, she said, I think I have. All right, well, that's good. That's good to know. Better safe than sorry, says Cynthia. Great. So, again, go to SanDiegoSeedCompany.com. All right. This next one is another one of mine that I haven't, I've talked about, but I haven't shown anybody until now. They are so not ready, but I have given seeds out to those of you that are willing to experiment with me. I mentioned yesterday that my favorite cherry is coyote. I also mentioned that coyote tends to cross and is a bit of a hoe. <laughs> so the, I think... Now I'm thinking it was three years ago. I'm starting to get, I have it all written down, but now I'm confused. Three years ago, I thought I was grew, growing coyote. It turned out to be a little bit bigger and it started turning red. I'm sending Rob pictures at work when it's starting to blush. I'm like, this doesn't look like coyote. And sure enough, what we now call Wile E Sweet Cherry, which is a play on Wile E Coyote. Rob named that one. I thought it was very clever. That was born and it was basically a pink, larger version of coyote delicious. We grew it. We loved it. Saved seeds. Then last year, wanted to stabilize Wiley Sweet Cherry. Out comes two more varieties, Rosy Coyote and Strawberry Coyote, which I know for a fact crossed with, and I talked about this yesterday, that tragically awful black strawberry. We had four plants of that darn thing that year that were right next to these. The anthocyanin, which I tend to not grow, as you probably know, it shows through on the strawberry coyote. So rosy coyote has a tiny bit at the top and it's a rose color. And I know these pictures don't really show it. If you look really carefully, Wiley Sweet Cherry is more of like a, a cherry, cherry color. Rosy is more of a rosy pink really pretty with just a hint of the antho on top. Strawberry Coyote is more of the red again, but with deeper antho on the top. All three of them taste completely different. I was able to grow out two generations of Wiley Sweet Cherry last year. So I've got those all planted already. I'm hoping to do two generations of all three of these. I wish I didn't like all of them so much because it's a lot of work to keep stabilizing these. Um, but those exerted stigmas in and current like tomatoes, they're not officially current tomatoes, but they're they're larger and they do tend to cross. They like to cross. They're delicious. So I know I gave Kina some of these. I gave Malachite Jen some of these. Um, so I'm excited to grow these out and hopefully get two generations out of these. Love my coyote. Yes, me too. I'm hoping to get actual coyote again this year. Love the name Meet Me. Yep. Uh, Wiley Coyote. I'm going to have to try coyote. Those look great. I'll eventually need those too. Is coyote is a, pa a pale opaque yellow. What a powerful flavor in those. I mentioned yesterday, we've been growing that for, that's probably our longest standing, um, maybe Cherokee purple too, which we're not doing this year, but coyote isn't always, unless it crosses with something and we don't get coyote. Wiley looks like it sparkles. Yes, all three of them do. And they really taste so different. They've got everything I love in a cherry, which is lots of seeds and goo. And they're, yeah, the, I, just, I love the variation on colors where black strawberry is awful when you cross it with 
Wiley Sweet Cherry, which is a coyote cross. I know it's very incestuous, so it's confusing, um, but it's really delicious. And you get the little antho without that icky antho flavor. Um, do these grow and spread out wildly like the regular coyote? Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Not quite as bad, but yes, they do. The coyote grows, we grow it in a five gallon, not even a grow bag, like a terracotta pot that we've had, oh gosh, probably 15, 20 years, it's falling apart. It grows, it's it's like a wild tomato. It is a wild tomato from, from Mexico. And it withhold, it stands abuse, it will show up in your sidewalk but it's delicious. It's a delicious wild one. So don't feel like you need to give it a whole lot of room because coyote will sprawl and grow wherever it is. Lots of grow outs. Thanks for all that work. That's nice. Thank you. Thank you. Do you typically grow for taste or looks? Easy answer. Taste. Definitely, definitely taste. No question. Looks, looks is a nice bonus, um, but definitely flavor through and through. And that's why I said I wish I didn't like all these so much um, because it would be nice to not have to stabilize one or two or even three. But um, yeah, it's fun. It's fun. And hopefully we get some good varieties out of it. Just need to like some bags and blossoms and get this thing to stop crossing on me. Um, wanting to taste them, says so Cynthia. Well, you know, if if you're willing to deal with unstabilized varieties, I'd be happy to give, I have, I have a limited amount of seeds. If you're willing to deal with something that may not come out, that looks like what you're expecting, I'm happy to give them out. All right. So you won't find anything on the internet about these. These are, these are my Mr. And Mrs. Tomato Head exclusives. All right. This one, I think I just got seeds from this recently from a trade. Kyrgyzstan, don't know the breeder. Origin is from Asia. It's a rarity from Asia with great taste. Um, got that from the website from Germany, bio k r a e u t e r dot d e. Um, Cariarte says flat, round, yellow, green beefsteak tomato, wonderfully fruity taste, a rarity as very few seeds are produced. The rarity thing got me on that, plus green when ripe got me. Um, yeah, it looks and sounds really good. Alex, Alex, you've got some great, you, you did a great stamp offer today. That was awesome. Um, I love them when they're unstable. Me too. And I'm so glad to see so many of you like that. You know, I, I've talked to certain people that kind of thumb their, their nose at Jarson's because they're not stable. And I know Kina feels the same way. It's like, sign me up, man. I want to grow out an F2 and F3 and F4. I'm excited. If I know what the crosses are and stuff, I'm super psyched to, you know, grow something out. Um, I've got a couple of micros on the horizon too, but yeah, if, if you guys are interested in the wild and the coyote crosses, um, you can private message me. If you send me a self-addressed stamp envelope, I'd be happy to share it. Don't have a lot of seeds, but um, private message me and I'll make sure I've got some for you. This one is thanks to our friend, Bill Yoder and Kina, Jen and I were talking about this one today. Maya and Scion's Airdrie Classic. Um, it's from Canada. The breeder's Jeffrey Casey. Honestly, from the looks of it, it wouldn't be something I would choose. But Bill Yoder said it's one of his all-time favorite tomatoes. I can't argue with that. I cannot argue with that. Um, Catherine Hendricks Jones, Kyrgyzstan is beautiful. I agree. I agree. I did like your stamp it a lot. I had all those kazoolas but one there was one you have but you that i don't do not have um but yeah you clearly you've got a good connection because those are some hard to find um kazoolas and i'm glad somebody took you up on that great offer uh, michael thank you Kyr kyrgyzstan is a country north of india i kind of figured it was somewhere up there um thank you i appreciate that yvette says love gwr for those of you that may not know, that stands for green, green when ripe. Um, Linda says, oh, no, not a thumb and nose at Jarson's. I want them all too, LOL, LOL. I know, I know. You can't go wrong with these crosses of Jarson's. 
Um, Amanda, you got to grow out my electric Eli with the black lightning bolts. Wait a minute. What is this? What is this? Is this your? Tell me what that is. I feel like I should know it. The black lightning bolts. Tell me, tell me. I'll grow it out. Luke says it has to be good. Um, meaning this one, if Bill says so, I agree. It's got to be good. It's got to be good. Yeah, the inside looks a little bit anemic to me, but that could just be where the photos came from. I don't know. I know. I think I already had seeds from a trade and then I got, I think I got some from the Shamrock Seed Swap also. Um, Teresa says this one looks super yummy for sure. Which one do I not have? I'll let you know. Um, I, I don't remember offhand. Do I? No. It was like, I feel like it was between 130 or 130 and uh, I don't know. This doesn't tell you much. I feel like it was somewhere between 130 and 180, somewhere in there. Um, oh, hi, Heidi. Maya is on my list this year too. It's early. Great for shorter seasons. That's good to know. So maybe, and that kind of explains the looks of it too. Maybe I'm going to hold off on this one. That's great. Um, Amanda says, I'm assuming this, this is for electric Eli. It seems to be an accidental cross with one parent being purple Cherokee, dark with black stripes. Amanda. Okay. Stop the presses. How am I just finding out about this now? How am I just finding out about this now? I love the name by the way, electric Eli. Um, Amanda, I am growing it. Your picture and description sold me. Where have I been? Where have I been? I love Unstable. I love Cherokee Purple, Dark with Black Stripes. Short. Ugh. We trade all the time. How have I not known this? I do not know. Um, not sure what it will be next, though. I don't care. I don't care. Would love to do a trade. Hint, hint, wink, wink. Okay. So that's... We need a post in the group, Amanda. Yeah, depending on how many seeds you have, we have need a post in the group for sure. You may not be willing to uh, do a mass, mass thing of that. You shouldn't have said it in the comments. Now people are going to be hunting you down, hunting you down. Okay, so that's my Maya and Scion's Airgy Classic. Anything else on that? Oh yes, tons. I didn't even read it. So this information comes from Tomato Faifu. It's a variety originating in Canada. Developed and stabilized by Jeffrey Casey. Initial cross of brandy wine with stupice or stupus. Yeah, that's important information that I almost overlooked. Red fruit weighing 100 to 250 grams. Beefsteak-like. Flattened at the poles with rounded ribbed shoulders. Excellent heirloom tomato flavor. Meaty and juicy beef flesh. It's a potato leaf. Um, indeterminate. Excellent early to mid-season production, like Heidi said. Um, Amanda, I will send you lots. Thank you. Thank you so much. I will totally put it in this year's growing list. I should be knocking it down, but I keep putting it back up. Okay. How are we doing here? Yeah, we're pretty, what do we have? Let's see. One, two, three, wait. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's only six more. What have we done so far? We're over the hump. <laughs> I'm excited for this one. Nano's Meatball Dwarf. This is one that is not stable. Got the seeds from Secret Seed Cartel. I love Secret Seed Cartel. They're in France. Um, I was just told by somebody, I'm not sure if she wants me to share her name or not, but who works closely with them who said that they are very selective about what they grow at Secret Seed Cartel. They do not put anything on their site that they do not like. Um, I love that. I love that about them. And they have like a, a rare category, which of course, you know, Lauren's going rare, sign me up. I've got, I got many of their things this year. Um, this is where um, Gigi's Glory Micro Dwarf is sold. Uh, Heidi um, Dolan's dwarf, uh, micro dwarf that many of us got this year. But it, this one's called Nano's Meatball Dwarf. Um, the story behind it is from Secret Seed Cartel. It says, years ago, we bought a pack of a known purple dwarf tomato from a well-known seed vendor. 
What we got from this pack of seeds was a chocolate beefsteak dwarf. Uh, in parentheses, it says Nano's meatball. And a large red beefsteak indeterminate, in parentheses, meatball. We have been growing from save seed for four years, and they have continued to produce the same as the parent. We are not offering seed for the red meatball at this time. Nano's meatball has been the most productive dwarf we have ever grown. The size of the tomatoes for a dwarf plant are is amazing. More like an indeterminate size would produce. It was our favorite tomato of 2023. Favorite tomato of 2023. <laughs> it produces brick red or chocolate, as some might describe the color, large beef steaks. Solid meat, not mealy or soft, and has the taste of a purple to us. Sweet with a deep tomato taste at the end. Seriously, the best dwarf we have grown to date. Seriously, the best dwarf we have grown to date. Need I say more? Up. Oh. Yeah, I kind of outed you already with the micro dwarf thing. Sorry, Heidi. Terry at Secret Seed Cartel is an amazing grower. You won't be disappointed from anything she sells. Thank you, Heidi. Um, you grow row. Ooh, meatball sounds delicious. I'll tell you, a name and a photo with no description gets me every time. I agree, Ro. Um, the photo grabs me initially, for sure. And that's why in my spreadsheet, if you guys have ever traded with me, I send you a link to my crazy... Um, Google Sheets spreadsheet. I have photos for everything, unless there's some Jarsons you, you cannot find photos and some Kazulas that you cannot find photos. Um, that is what initially grabs me. And then the description, I mean, th this description from Secret Seed Cartel, boom. You don't need to tell me twice. That is going immediately on the grow list. I've given out seeds for several. Um, in fact, I have some of these seeds that if you sign up with hashtag tomato, I have at least one, maybe two packs I can give out as a prize. So if you'd like Nano's Meatball Dwarf, you sign up. Um, also have, you know what? I'm going to put my Coyote Crosses in here too for any, no. Well, yeah, you guys will have a choice. I'll put my Coyote Crosses as an option too. So, so far, Isis Brandy, my Coyote Crosses, and Nano's Meatball Dwarf. Um, I'll be giving away your choice to five people, your choice of one of those to five people. So yeah, that is a beauty, Nano's Meatball Dwarf. Um, that meatball sounds like my kind of tomato, right, Darla? It was you with the loud flavor last year, right? I think you you like loud flavor too. Miss Alex M, these varieties are blowing my mind. Just never heard of them. Hashtag <laughs> tomato. <laughs> well, part of what we like Kina, Jen, and I in TLC is growing and sharing seeds and doing the more rare and not heard of varieties to make it more well known, bring it to the United States. I mean, vendors like Tomato Eden and um, Lux Tomato and Cariarti and um, uh, Bienna Seeds, of course. Um, that ship to the United States. It's amazing that we can get some of these Euro these Eastern European varieties over here. Also had fortunate, I talk about my Jarson Angel all the time. My friend from Poland who wishes to remain anonymous um, gave me every Jarson but three. She does not have three of them. And if she doesn't have them, nobody does. We're working on one of those three, um, but it's possible they just don't exist um, out there other than Jarson, who I here is not trading or selling at all, but we'll keep it, keep it, keep your eyes on the prize. Maybe someday. Um, <laughs> Missy, far cry from my early girl. Yeah. If you like early girl, there's nothing wrong with that at all. Darla says, yes, I'm the loud one that will stick with me forever. You said that. And I'm like, yes, exactly. Loud flavor. I like loud flavor. Life, to me, life is too short for a bland tomato. It just is. You told us you eat vegan and now you want to eat meatballs. Ah, yes, I do. I want to eat this meatball for sure. That's a good meatball. What is that from? The Wedding Singer. That movie, The Wedding Singer. Adam Sam Sandler's giving piano lessons and this old lady pays him with a big meatball in his hands. If you guys have seen the movie. He says, that's a good meatball. She makes him like eat it right then and there. Okay. 
Next, Purple Rain. This one should be no surprise. Not to be mistaken with Purple Rain, R-E-I-G-N. Two completely different tomatoes. This is a Bill Yoder variety. It is um, a much more stabilized version of Dwarf Purple Heartthrob, which is the one that Kim Lund said brought her to tears. Um, he stabilized and tweaked it over the past few years. He did say on our show with Jen on our Tomato Talk Live that he believes the flavor would be about the same. He does not have them in stock um, at this point. So if you can find them somewhere, great. If you can't, Dwarf Purple Heartthrob, you can find. So this is Purple Rain. It is a dwarf. It is part of his Prince collection. What else do I know? It's Bill's favorite variety. Um, large striped heart-shaped tomato on a dwarf plant. Purple color with metallic green stripes. The flavor is just as amazing as the looks. Overwatering can result in some surface cracking, so go easy on the water. Harvest before turning over ripe for peak flavor. It's an indeterminate. And it looks amazing and sounds amazing. Um, I feel like I'm missing comments here. Nope, I guess not. Guess not. Okay. Trying to get everybody up there as much as possible. I mean, I'm going to grow purple heartthrob and see what happens. Yeah. I mean, if you watch back the episode, I came out and asked him because I was wondering, do I grow both? Because I have seeds for both. Do I grow both? I do have seeds started for both. But if they're going to taste the same and he says they will, I don't know. Garden space, like that's valuable real estate, you know? I mean, it wouldn't be the end of the world to have two of them, right? And I know Kim wants to grow both to do a taste off. And that was initially what I thought also. So I think I'm going to grow both. They're dwarfs. They don't get that big, right? Yeah. That's why I say about micros and then they're overtaking my house. <laughs> my grow room slash basement. So that is dwarf purple rain. Anybody? Oh, Samantha, I'm growing purple rain this year as well. Yeah, good. It's uh. Looks like a good one. I mean, Bill Yoder, you can't go wrong. All right, what is next? Sicilian Godfather. Excited for this one. Pretty sure I sent Keena seeds for this one too. Or maybe, I feel like Keena, this is another one you had me order for you. Um, these came from Happy Cat Farms also, much like the first one I showcased tonight, which is you can't, you won't, you don't stop cherry. Sicilian Godfather is from Italy, unknown breeder. Um, the story from Happy Cat Farm says Sicilian Godfather heirloom tomato got seeds for this amazing monster of a tomato that came to them from an Italian American family here in the valley in Wilmington, Delaware. All right, clearly this vendor's not in Canada like I thought. Because if he talks about here in the Valley in Wilmington, Delaware, I'm thinking, no, apologize for that wrong information. Go to Happy Cat Farm, I think, .com. I thought it was like .ca, but whatever. Google Happy Cat Farm, you'll find it. Um, anyway, the work of these Italian immigrants can still be seen all over the Valley, from the Chateau of the DuPonts to the timeless stone walls that line the fields and forest. My friend's family brought it with them from Italy in the 30s from Sicily. Sicilian Godfather is gigantic fruit. Two pound fruit are the norm. Mr. Tomato Head's going to be excited. They are super thin skinned. Mrs. Tomato Head's going to be excited and start to bruise the moment you touch them. Kind of see that in the photo here, actually, can't you? Um Oh, this looks good. Sounds good. Good fruit setter for a big boy. The flavor profile is spot on. Tomato acidity, juiciness that will bring you back to your Nona's garden. And then he says, although I am only 0.06% Italian, I still get it. I'm an Italian wannabe. Italy was my dream trip since I was a little girl. And it lived up to its expectations. I love everything about Italy. It lived up to every expectation I had. People ask me where I want to go next. Back to Italy. 
to be honest with you. I really do. And so I'm growing quite a few Italian varieties this year. This include this being one of them. Um, the meaty flesh and great flavor lead themselves to sauce. I have a picture of my daughter holding one of these and everyone thought it was a pumpkin. I smashed them skins and all with a bite of basil and the best olive oil I had, make some fresh pasta and had one of the best meals of the summer. Come on, come on. I got them from Heirloom Seed House, says Cheryl. Hi, Cheryl. Um, yeah, they, they work closely together, Happy Cat Farm and Heirloom Seed House. I know Happy Cat Farm has a lot of um, Heirloom Seed House varieties. So um, I didn't I don't, didn't remember that they had them at Heirloom Seed House. I should know this because I've ordered like a lot from Heirloom Seed House. But um, yeah, I'm glad they have them there too. Grow both, says Sathya. I think, yeah, they're already started. I can, and I can't kill them, so I'm going to have to. Um, Kathy says, just received my order of the Prince Collection seeds from Bill Yoder, the ones he had in stock. That's great. I'm so glad. Thank you, Bill, if you're watching. Thank you. Sathya says, I'm going to grow both. Great. And I'm growing heartthrobs, says Green Skin Gardener. Michael says, holy cow, what is this monstrosity? I know, I know. Hi, Naray. Looks amazing. I agree. Um, Godfather sounds exciting, says Facebook user. I like the shape, a little lumpy and crooked. Yes, me too. Mouthwatering. Yes. LOL, I'm half Sicilian. Great. Well, you have to grow this then. You just do. And guess who has seeds to give away? If you want to win your choice of these seeds, I've got one more I haven't announced yet. So, so far, I've got Sicilian Godfather, Nano's Meatball Dwarf, Isis Brandy, and My Coyote Crosses. Um, five winners. You'll have your choice of one of those. Hi, Flomaton Famous. Glad you're here. Thank you. Uh, Amanda says, my grandfather came here and a lot of my gardening comes from him. That's awesome. Team Jarson, yeah, Team Jarson, way to go. By the way, if you are on Grow Out Teams, I realize the information has been lacking out there, that there hasn't been anything out. Um, hoping to get out next week, but basically to start your seeds. Um, we're not going to keep an eye on you like other groups do. We're not going to ask you to send photos or anything like that. If you have, a, oh, we're going to be announcing this tomorrow too, but I may as well announce it here as well. I've got two people from team Bill Yoder, Fred Hempel, that had to drop out. One was because Kina, Jen, and I screwed up and she was on two different teams, which is not allowed. And she chose to go with, I think, team variegated. So I have a spot there. And then one is somebody on the team that her situation has drastically um, changed and she's willing to give her seeds and I'm forgetting what the seeds are. Hopefully I remember by tomorrow it's seeds and she will pay, she will cover the cost of the $6. So if anybody wants to join team Bill Yoder, Fred Hempel, um, let, let me know if you're not, if you can't be on another team yet, but I'm looking for two more people to fill those spots. Um, I will be announcing tomorrow too. And I can let you know what varieties aren't available in the team yet. If you're having a problem problem sourcing the seeds, um, well, one one is Jen Canseco is the one that's going to be giving her seeds to somebody um, that can take her spot. But then we still have one where you get to choose the variety. And if you're having trouble with the variety, I can help you with that. Okay. Um, oh, wait. All right. I'm going to go with the first two. Alex, I would love to join a grow out. Fantastic. And then Missy says, I can help out too. All right, you guys are the first two. If you can private message me, fantastic. Great. Well, private message me and we'll work out the terms. I, I've been meaning to announce, especially the first one for weeks. I've just been a little, little busy doing this, <laughs> but it's fun. Um, I'm sorry, Sniper Cat. I, I think I'll, I'll have you as a backup if either of those don't work out. Thank you all for stepping up. Um, and, you know, I can look too. We, we may be able to use more on the team. I think that was a team that didn't have 15 spots. If, if not, if I can use another spot, I will definitely take you up on that. So Alex, 
and Missy. Okay. If you don't know what we're talking about in Tomato Lovers Collective and Swap, we announced these grow outs. We have six different teams. You signed up for the team you want to grow out. You provide your own seeds normally um, in this situation. Uh, we can get you seeds if you don't have them. Um, and then at the end of the season, you send in 100 and 150 seeds, 10, no, 15 packs of 10 seeds to your coach, your, your team, not coach, uh, host. It's either Kina, Jen, or me. And then we disperse the seeds. So everybody on your team will send in seeds and you get back for $6. You get back up to 15 um, different varieties of unique seeds. These grow outs are different from other groups in that they're very, we chose unique varieties. We didn't choose like reds and greens and pinks and bicolor. We wanted something different. So we have Kazulas, we have Jarsons, we have Billy Oder, Fred Hempels all in one category. We have variegated and there's two more, um, ultra rare and long keepers. Those are our six. Um, keep scooping out what teams are you talking about? Um, I didn't look that see that the internet was was out, but you can watch back what I just said or or private message me if you want to know more about the grow outs. You can also find it in our group guides. I see you're in our group. And you, if you go into our group guides and find um, in one of the guides down towards the bottom, it talks about our grow outs and you can find out more information. Okay, let's get moving. Speaking of Italy, this is another long keeper. I mentioned one yesterday, Banyel Buffar from Spain. This is one I got um, directly from Italy. And I realized that long keeper up there has a typo in it, but I was running short on time. So it's long key -E ear winter storage tomato long keeper got these directly from Italy <clears throat> um, from they're from Tuscany. The um, it says this fabulous variety. We must thank Mr. Danielle Albanese, who has looked after it for many years and donated the seeds to us together with others still involved in the control process and which will probably be available next year. We don't know the exact history of this tomato. Daniela has always grown it. He tells us hangs it on, in the garage and it keeps very well. He sends us the seeds and a tomato to demonstrate how to preserve it. It's February. The tomato is in excellent production uh, or in excellent condition. I'm sorry, not still production. Condition. The plant is determinate, rustic, and productive. The berry is round, weighing a maximum of 30 grams. The skin is exceptionally thick. The pulp is very sweet. These are among the main characteristics of Serbian tomatoes. The variety is very stable. The cherry tomatoes are all the same size, a beautiful red when ripe. Despite its size, this variety does not suffer from apical rot. It can be grown in pots because it tolerates water stress very well. We tried it in the experiment experimentation for arid cultivation, as you will read in the soon to be released guide. Um, it says it is one of those varieties at risk of disappearing and um, the vendor in Italy, I got it from, says they're distributing it free of charge in the municipalities of origin. So only if you live in Italy, in Tuscany and neighboring municipalities, just request it by leaving a message when ordering or by calling and collecting them completely free of charge at our office. I didn't know if these seeds were ever going to show up. It's um, seedhunters.com believe it or not. And they're in Italy. I ordered a few long keepers from them. It took a long time and I wasn't sure if they would come. It wasn't really clear if they shipped to the United States. So I just kind of took a chance. Um, but they did show up. And again, hearing that the variety is in danger of being extinct, I have to grow. It looks and sounds awesome. And no, Wait, yes, I can offer this one as an option too. I think I have one pack I can, not a full pack, but I do have five seeds I can give away. So I'm going to add this to Serbo, Discano. And I did give some of these in the Shamrock seed swap. I gave a couple packs to that too. So we'll add this to the list of possible prizes you can choose from. Um, 
Oh, nice. Never heard of that long keeper. Looks like a good size. Am I noticing that it seems like most long keepers are determinate? As far as I know, I'm, I'm guessing the same, Jen, that they are determinate. Um, I'll need to keep an eye out for Bombolino. I think Bombolino actually means round. Um, so I don't, I don't think Bombolino is what you want to look for because I have other long keepers called Bombolino at the end. I think it's this the Serbo Toscano. And Bombolino is just that it's a round one. If any of you speak Italian, you want to correct me, but I'm pretty sure that's correct. Um, so, yeah, you can look at um, seedhunters.com, see if they still have them in stock. It, you probably won't get them, if you're in the United States at least, you probably won't get them for this season because they did take a while. Um, but I'll be growing it and saving seeds too. So must save the tomato. That should be, wait. I just had this idea for like a group shirt, merch, TLC merch. We must save the tomato, <laughs> right? Or our hats or a sticker, sticker, a laptop sticker. Yes, I like it. Must, I'm writing this down, must save the tomato. Too many ideas, too, many, too little time. Must save the tomato. That's right. That's what we do. Um, Dana's here, Dana Smith. I'm late, but I made it. I'm so glad we've, I'm just about finishing up. I think I have two more to go, but we've talked about some amazing variety. So I hope you catch the replay. Maylin, my husband and I are dreaming about farmland in my home country, Philippines, where gardening can be done practically all year round. Oh, that would be wonderful. Cindy C., um, from Scenes Harvest and Gardens, who's in our group. She's in the Philippines and she's harvesting stuff right now. You may have seen her photos. They're just beautiful. Um, yes. Yes to a laptop, laptop sticker group merch. Yes. I love it also. Yes. Malachi Jen, save the tomato sticker. Yes. Save the tomato. Save the tomato. I love it so much. Save the tomato shirt, says Garden Girl. Yes. Yes, what a dream that would be. Well, let's make it a reality. Maybe it's something to work on after the grow season or or after my seeds are planted and things are at a lull, but they're never really at a lull. I have I don't even want to show you what's over there stuff I have to log, but we I had been wanting to do group merch for a while. Um I mean, obviously not that long. We've only been in existence since last July, but many people have approached me about it and I would like to do that. I love that save the tomato. I love that so much. Thank you, Cynthia, for that, that motto, our group motto. I love it. Okay. Wouldn't be an episode without a Jarson. We have two more. Yep. Two, this one and then one more after this. Jarson 5. This is a cross between Cherokee purple and Ananas Noir. I don't know that I really need to say much more than that. Cherokee purple and Ananas Noir. And look at it. Just look at it. Again, Jarsons have a lot of variations. I think I have a few versions of Jarson 5, I think. Um, Tomato Eden does have a version that she sells. In fact, this picture on the right is from her website at tomatoeden.net. Um, let's see. She says cross between, well, I say, char I know, cross between Cherokee Purple and Nan Nana Noir. She doesn't have the crosses on her site, which... I'm not really sure why, because to me, that really sells it from, let's see, but she does say tall 1.7 meters in a greenhouse, bush of normal foliage. Sometimes the, the translations don't really translate. It says regular sheet. Not really sure what that means. And that's coming from Latvia to, the, to English. I'm not really sure. Um, one of my favorites, and I've shared this in unboxings before, is um, something about, about, sickness like won't be sick which i know means not disease but the the way she phrases it sounds funny in english um fruits are green with scarlet yellow red spots a very elegant variety weight from 200 grams juicy sweet taste absorbing all the colors of summer productivity is good cherokee purple and ananas are you've got flavor you've got looks what could go wrong? You know, last year, one of my favorites, which I keep mentioning, was Uptown Funk. And that was that is a cross between 
malachite box one of my my not one of my favorites my absolute favorite along with my buddy malachite jen over there um in fact these are malachite box she put on my mug anyway um that was a cross between malachite box or malachite vayash katulka and berkeley pink tie-dye which is another one of my favorites that i'm also not growing this year and indigo rose which i hear is just a terrible terrible variety but a lot of people use it for crosses um anyway it worked it worked but i was wondering if you cross two positives like malachite box and berkeley pink tie-dye does that equal a positive or does it equal a negative well in that case it equaled a positive so i'm kind of banking on that this year because i'm growing a lot of crosses of great a lot of my favorite varieties which you you see here um mama ec is here hi mama ec hello tomato heads glad you're here katie v says i have jarson five on my list this year too awesome brian's here jarson five wahoo team jarson go team jarson um kathy said tlc merch would be great yes uh cynthia says i'm thrilled with our new motto that she gave us um blessed vermont says wow just wow jarson five is beautiful it is i agree you grow row that looks interesting get in my belly i agree can't come fast enough riverdale gardens that looks awesome jennifer fox says if jarson five isn't amazing then i give up not really <laughs> same same uh it cannot be bad i agree it cannot be bad Garden girl, you want uptown funk? Message me. Message me. Got plenty of seeds. I can add that to the list too. Let's do that. Uptown funk. Don't believe me, just watch. Woo. My daughter's a singer. I am not, but I do like to sing. Okay, do those do those taste good? Well, this I don't know yet. Uptown funk does. It really does. Um, okay. Ready for the last one? Drum roll, pre drum, drum roll, please. Gosh, we've got like 80, 80 live viewers. This is crazy and awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right. In the spirit of Italy, once again. Oh, no. Oh, I forgot to upload it. Can I do it now? I can't believe it. Hang on. Give me a minute, gang. Let me see if I can do this. Maybe I can just show it. Let me, I can just show it on the screen. Yeah. Um, okay, I can do this. It's not, not the vendor I got it from. Oh, I had this whole nice slide just like these. I must have, I was in a rush to, I thought I got one more up, but I did not. But have no fear. The internet is here. And the last one is a rare variety from Italy called Nostrano Grasso. It says it's a very, am I showing this? Yes, okay. A very rare heirloom from Italy and mainly unheard of in the United States. It produces medium-sized tomatoes and is versatile as a smaller slicer, but also a great sauce tomato. It has superb tomato flavor with a hint of sweetness. Rare. Superb tomato flavor, sweetness. Um, I got seeds from South Georgia Seed Company, and they say very rare heirloom from Italy. Um, hmm. You know, I wonder if it's the same company because they say the exact same thing. They also say, we'll need some support. Probably one of my new favorites now. Um, yeah, getting back to what they say, Grow Your Health Gardening, who I've ordered micros from in the past. They're very good. They're on Etsy, and they have this shop on the internet, Grow Your Health Gardening. Um, it, kept, it just kept pumping out the tomatoes and setting even in higher temps and heat here in the southeast. If you're looking for authentic Italian flavor and a good producer, this is your tomato. Such a pretty tomato on the, fi on the fine and on the plate. I assume that's supposed to be vine. Um, and this, oh, I know why I know this company too. Grow Your Health Gardening, they adapt a lot of their tomatoes to hydroponic growing. So 
while they sell the seeds, there's have been adapted to hydroponic growing conditions. Michael, Michael, um, which is really, really neat about this company, um, Grow Your Health Gardening. But yes, yeah, so that is Nostrano Grasso. And I do have seeds to give away for this as well as an option for the giveaway. Oh, Jen, you're right. You do need it. If you want it, let me know. I'm serious. I don't know if you're, you're well, now you, your real estate has expanded, hasn't it? I have extras. Let me know. It does look like Costa Luta Genovese. Um, I grew, we grew that a couple of years ago. These seem to be smaller and not quite as ribbed. Um, I wonder if I have a picture of our Costa Luto. It was fantastic. Our Costa Luto two years ago won us a major award. Um, we, we went to a tomato festival in Easton, Pennsylvania, which is not far from us. I'm in New Jersey, but we're very close. To, we're about 20 minutes from Easton, Pennsylvania. And um, our friend Easton Tomato Girl had a tomato festival and we entered this one Costa Lucha Genovese in um, most unique category because it was, it was crazy. It was awesome. And we won. We won Tomato Fest t-shirts and some seeds. It was great. Um, but yes, this looks, this looks similar and smaller, but you're right. They look adorable, right? So, so cute. So as you can see, gang, while I'm always very verbal about not finding reds that have loud pronounced flavor, I, I'm never giving up. I mean, a lot of these Italian varieties sound fantastic. And speaking of not giving up, this isn't even close to my 2024 grow list. So expect more of these next week. I know I'm, I wish I could do another one tomorrow, but I'm heading away for um, close friends bridal shower up in Massachusetts for the weekend. So that won't be um, that won't be happening, but maybe Monday. Oh, serious finish is pretty hairy again today, Lauren. Thank you. Thank you. Um, amazing list. Thank you. I'm really, it's so much fun sharing it with you guys live. It just is. And thank you for joining me on this journey. It's, you know, it's helping me too, because I'm rereading some of these things. And once I say it here, it's a definite. And I have a definite grow list, but there's definitely some I need to take off. So I'm going and I'm plugging in in the slides and and stuff like ones that I definitely need to grow. So if this is the way I knock things off, so be it. Um, I love Castelloto Genovese, so flavorful. It was great paste tomato, very unique. I wonder if I can quickly find our unique tomato. Hang on, I think I had it, oops. I think I had it on our Mr. And Mrs. Tomato Head Facebook page. If it doesn't take too long. Um, it was really funky. I wish I could go, go into my Dropbox account and find it. Um, cause it's really, it's it, definitely like a mega blossom type situation. Let's see. Castelluto Genovese. Hmm. Oops. What happened? Let's try this again. For those of you that don't know, I do have a picture up on my, on our Mr. Mrs. Tomato Head page of what Castelluto Genovese looks like. And that is this one here. That is Castelluto Genovese. It's known as a paste tomato, um, really great shelf life. I thought the flavor was good. Um, not great for me. Um, really unique. I loved, I really loved the variety though. I would totally grow it again. Um, and I look, it looks like I compared it. This was the same year. We also did Zapotec, which was another ribbed one. So I did like this photo comparison of Castelluto Genovese and Zapotec. We like Castelluto much better, but it was very unique, but I want to find our most unique. Surely I put it up there, didn't I? Our big, all right, I found something from Tomato Fest. Let's look at that. September 11, 2022. Here it is. Here we are with Easton Tomato Girl and her husband wearing our Mr. and Mrs. Tomato Head shirts. That's the shirts they're wearing. Those are the shirts we won. Here's where these were some of the entries. I don't know what category that was. Oh, these were some of the, they did taste test. These were some of the taste test. That's Dana. 
Easton Tomato Girl. And that was somebody from a vegan um, cheese place, which made me happy. And this was our tasting plate. Here's us. Hair was way too blonde then. Oh, there's our award. Hopefully I show the picture of the tomato. There it is. Yay. That is our award-winning Castelluto Denovese. Isn't that cool? There, that one wasn't even ugliest. It was most unique. When she told us she was doing a tomato festival, we this was growing on the vine, and we were just praying that it would stay good until the tomato festival. But thankfully, this is a, it's got good shelf life. But sometimes with those mega blossoms or whatever, you just never know. They can like one side can get funky and the other side won't. So anyway, that is I digress once again, and we're at an hour forty again. But we did we did do two more tomatoes today. All right, let's give away some prizes. Let's give away some prizes. So, um, oh wait, let's get to some comments. Copper pipe, where can I get that? Maybe too late. Copper pipe came from um, Carolina's Paradise on Etsy. I bet she still has it. Carolina's Paradise. She's in our group. Also, um, uh, Lydia Stafford is her name. Really, really great person. Um, but yeah, you can find that Carolina's Paradise on Etsy. They have some great varieties there. Congratulations. Thanks, Luke. Yeah, still still loving that, that big win we had two years ago. Um, all right, let's give away some prizes. Let me get rid of this. So let me remind everybody what your choices will be. Hang on. Thank you guys for all for being here again. I'm always so humbled at how many of you show up for these. Um, and also just like humbled that there are other people like me out there. So you will have five people. You will have your choice of Sicilian Godfather. That Let me get rid of this for a minute. That was that monster one. Actually, I can, I can show it again. Oh, wait, what am I doing? I'm already showing it. All right. So Sicilian Godfather is this one. You have a choice of this. I think I have a Deserbo Discano Bombolino Longkeeper. Don't have jars and five. Don't even look at it. Don't look at it. A Nano, Nano's Meatball Dwarf, I definitely have. Don't have that. Don't have that. You can pick our very unstable Coyote Crosses. Hmm. I, de I, I definitely have Bow Mango. I can add that to the list. Bow mango. Got a lot of choices today. Don't have that. Mm, don't have chef guy. Don't have cop for pipe. No. Don't have earth angel. I Isis brandy. I'm almost positive I can give away at least one of those. Nope. Nope. Hmm. I don't think so. But if you win and this is, you have your eye on this, we can talk about it. I have to check. I don't think I have any left. I just gave some to Samantha Schaefer. I know you're out there, Samantha. I just gave her some, um, put it today, and I'm pretty sure I didn't have any more to spare. Um, okay, so Bow Mango, Sicilian Godfather, probably Isis Brandy, Coyote Crosses. Don't have purple rain. Think I have this. Nope. And um, the last one, Nostano Grasso, which is the one that looks like a mini Castelluto Genovese. Okay. And I will remind you. I can remind you. Just private message me if you win or if you're on YouTube, just email me, learnyatme.com. Okay. My daughter. She was talking to me recently, Riley, saying that it was a very, um, my email address, learningatme.com is very like egotistical. I don't, she didn't realize it's like the default email address of, of Apple. It, it came with my iPhone at me.com. So anybody has access to a me.com um, if they're still available. I mean, I've had that for years and years. Okay, let's go. Let's go, Lauren. Five people. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Tomato, tomato, tomato. 
Riverdale Gardens, congratulations. That's number one. I am showing this, right? Yes, okay. Next one, number two. Katherine Hendricks Jones, congratulations. Please private message me. Just writing it down so I can keep track. Green Thumb Gardener, 65. Yay. Get your green thumb on, Green Thumb Gardener. Okay, we got two more. Licia, congratulations, Licia. And the last one. Lisa B. Congratulations, Lisa. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Congratulations to the winners. Ooh, don't mean to be drawing again. Don't have another one. Sorry. Hang on. There we go. <laughs> Congratulations, everyone. Thank you guys for being here. If you caught any or if you missed any of this episode, I showcased 18 more varieties. This was part two. Part one was yesterday. You can, if you didn't catch part one, that's on my YouTube channel, Mr. And Mrs. Tomato Head. If you don't subscribe to my YouTube channel, please do, Mr. And Mrs. Tomato Head. And like this episode if you're watching on, on YouTube. I never say that stuff. I'm starting to get more um, aware of that. But um, yeah, catch, yesterday, catch part one yesterday was 16 varieties. Part two, 18 varieties. They all look spectacular. I think those of you that watch the whole time can agree they look spectacular. I'll be doing a part three next week. Who knows how long this will go on, but there'll be at least a part three. All right, gang. Thanks again. If you're in Tomato Lovers Collective and Swap, I hope you can join us live 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time tomorrow. I know the time's not great for many, but we will be giving away prizes to those that can't join us live. And we have a lot of prizes. Many of you have donated more than seeds, too. It's going to be fantastic. We only have 90 minutes, so we're going to have to blow through them. But thank you all who've donated. And I'll catch you next time. Peace and love. Get your gratitude on and go grow tomatoes. Bye.